up, everyone? This is Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 234, and we're recording on May 1st, 2023. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up, everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as a quick reminder, check out Soju Talk on your favorite podcast platform, sub to us on YouTube, and join the Soju Talk Discord, and be a part of the nation. All right, announcement this week. A big shout out to our new Fuego patron. Uh, Psyche Cat is what I'm going to go with. I'm pretty sure that's correct. But, you know, Psyche Cat signed up for the Patreon as a Fuego patron. Thank you. Congratulations. And thank you. Not congratulations. What? what? <laughs> Congrats on signing up. You made the right decision. Congrats. Thank you. Congrats. You <laughs> thank you. Thank, right you. Right thank you, though. Yeah, thanks. 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 Um, yep. Yeah, that, that's kind of it for the announcements. We're covering three songs this week. Heyang Shung featuring Lisa. It's a B-side, right, guys? Um. Technically, Technically, yeah. He beat out the A side from Taeyang Seed. So we're covering the B side. So uh, the other song is uh, Woods Journey, and the last one is La Seraphim with Unforgiven featuring Niall Rogers. All right, first song Taeyang Shung with Lisa on it. YG Black Label now. If you remember, he moved from YG proper to YG mm. Black Label. Mm-hmm. Uh, last three songs were Vibe, and then really long time ago, uh, Wake Me Up and Feel Like. Oh my God. It's been All way. right. How do we feel about Shung? I think Anita likes it, right? I That's do. What she told me. I do. Oh, did she? Okay. I'm I'm more of the opinion that I like the event of Taeyang and mm-hmm. Lisa doing something together, but I'm not convinced about the song itself as much. Uh. Mm. Okay. Why don't why don't why don't you go first, Anita? Why do you why do you dig the song? Why is it okay. in your dig dig list? Um, I really really like the song this week. Um, because. Well, since it was more of a B-side release, um, it was fully a performance video, um, which I true, true. I really enjoy. So I'm a little biased for this. And the choreo- I believe choreography work was done maybe in collaboration with YGX or just Jerk because they're, they're mainly the dancers, um, the backup dancers for the music video. I think he also had... Ute and Noje, who are not affiliated with YGX or Just Jerk, but they're they're in the scene. Um, very good dancers, very popular. Uh, so I was like, oh, I recognize everybody mm. in this music video, which I thought was really cool. Um, choreo was really, how should I say it? Like the sound and the choreography felt very old school in a way, where I felt <laughs> like, oh, this is something I I feel like fits Taeyang and his catalog of the more like slower r&b style but with a twist it felt a little more modern in a way um i don't know i like that i like the that combination of things so it sounds like you like the 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 choreo aspect of the song the performance aspect of it right yes yeah Mm -hmm. that was good that was awesome that Mm -hmm. kind of matches what doug mentioned earlier right it's like an event almost rather than like um i don't know how would you word it I just kind of felt like the song itself was just kind of like, you know, it's it's, it's a bit of a vibe. It's fun, whatever, right? Mm. But I like, the chorus. I, thought it was I don't think catchy. it does a, like anything too crazy or too extravagant, right? Like, mm. I don't think I would ever listen to this outside of watching it with the music. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. I, I do yeah. think, I listen to a lot of songs like this, right? I, mm-hmm. um, it's, this has been like a staple sound in KRMB for like a good while now. Um, mm. Crush is, I would say, the one who kind of like introduced it. Ah, um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, everybody's had their go at it, right? Dean, obviously, J Park, PH One, all of these people had various iterations of this trap rhythm with a bit of auto tune and a bit of like funky rhythmic vocalists. Um, and then you have this rap feature, like that's you know, all of these hitting the marks. Um, and it re- really feels like what it feels like to me is. Taeyang saw everybody who's a generation after him. He saw everybody do their thing, you know? And he was like, hey, I haven't I haven't really done stuff like that. I haven't really done pop R&B. Because he has done a lot mm, of different yeah. R&B styles in his previous work. Mm. But nothing as trap and pop leaning as mm-hmm. the recent R&B musicians have been. And, I, and it feels like between Vibe and this one, it really feels like he wanted to kind of like remodernize his sound and i feel like that's I coming agree. through a little bit mm-hmm. right um mm-hmm. yeah like if you think about the the auto-tuned woo, 
woo sounds, you know, like the the, the shouts in the background. I, I don't know. Uh, yeah, the, the sound effects too, the shung sound effects. Right, yeah. the shung and the, oh, like, look at my Lamborghini, yeah. you know, like that's. I'm just <laughs> caught up on the, I don't like the word shung, but like, I just. Like, <laughs> what is, what is okay, your I can beef see with that. the word? I, can see that. I don't know, I think they could have just Why? used the word zoom instead, dude. Why do you have to make a new onomatopoeia here? It's, mm-hmm. a, it's a real word. What? <laughs> it is. Is it? In Korean, yeah. What does it mean? Yeah. Going like, fast. Like fast. Like it's something that's fast. Like shoom, there it goes. You know, like an airplane. Okay, that makes more sense now because as an American <laughs> who doesn't know that's a Korean on a B- monopia, I was like, there's way other like American like English words we could have used here. Like <laughs> Okay, no, that's fair, that's fair. It's a it's a real word in Korean. In, in okay, it shoom. looks kinda to be fair though, it looks kinda goofy when written out it in does. English, doesn't it? It does. It does. It does, right? <laughs> it does. Uh, okay, this yeah. makes way more sense to me now. Um, I I do feel like it lacks a little bit of like the Taeyang Taeyang spice, and it, it feels kind of like he's holding back. Maybe he's not fully warmed it's a, it's up. A, it's like a it's like one percent mopey, you know. It's a little, oh, really? it's a little mopey. It, it it feels Taeyang's one of those people who I feel like can get really really expressive while being fully in control. Mm. Uh huh. And I feel like that expressive side of him didn't really fully come out. Maybe it's the genre. Maybe it's the style of it. Maybe he's not fully warmed up. Maybe he just didn't want to. I don't know. Um, How did so, we like Laliso Manobal's Let's talk about uh, that. Feature. She was dope. Oh, my God. Her right? tone was really good. Oh okay, my I God. really liked her. The on highlight this. for me was when Lisa came on the track. Because I wasn't a fan of her solo stuff, to be honest. I ain't going to drop some money like all over the place, right? But this <laughs> song I could get behind, right? Hell, yeah. It was nice. This I, like sexy talk rap thing she got going on was really good. It was like I melodic a little bit too. Like I feel like that's right? not. If you think about like Lisa's rap, it's always like all powerful, you know. Like and then this one is uh, a lot more like laid mm. back and almost melodic. And I was like, yo, like she can. <laughs> she's got this so thing. Much rapping talent. is really good. Yeah, it's really good for her. She no, got to do this great. more. Honestly, great. yeah. Honestly, it felt like she took the spotlight a little bit, like away from Taeyong. Oh really? Yeah, like. Mm. Because I left the song thinking, okay, Taeyang did his thing, but Lisa with the melodic rap thing, oh my god, like, <laughs> god damn, like, I don't know. And I feel like I'm kind of in Doug's boat, right, where, like, I wasn't a big fan of La Lisa nor Money. Mm-hmm. And, like, this kind of brings me back to, like, why can't they just... No, okay, here's here's the craziest thing. Song. Um, we got the Rosé track, right, which has kind of grown on me a little bit. I think I've listened to it enough. Rosé or Jisoo? I, I mean the Jisoo track was okay. okay. The Jisoo track, we got Whoa, the Jisoo track. Oh, there, be careful. I listened to it. I listened to it a bunch. I'm kind of okay with it now. Um, it's just like the YG scarcity thing that they do, you know, black label scarcity, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh-huh. It's kind of working though, like <laughs> for me at least, because like I want to see Blackpink stuff. Like they're all over the place. Like I, I know that. Um, I think that Jenny and Rose are at the Met Gala today, or something. Oh, are they? Yeah, wow. the Met Gala. So I've been seeing all the crazy dresses and stuff that's been going on. Um, Doji Cat is literally a cat, by the way. It's kind of creepy. Nice. I'm not going to look that up. Good <laughs> lord. Um, <laughs> Good lord. But like, okay. the ar- artificial scarcity, number one, I hate that they do that, right? Because they don't need to. But um, love hate, yeah. But it is working, right? <laughs> on a psychological level. So I could see why they're doing it like this. Like, we're getting a taste of Lisa right here, right? Just a mm. sampler at Costco, you know? But, like, I'm convinced to go to the freezer section and buy the thing they're sampling here. But I don't know. I don't know if, I, if uh, Black Label or YG is going to deliver that to me, which is the frustrating part. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know how I feel as a whole. I also want to shout out Ijong. You know, she's on the Hemidi Yechepa show, which is doing very well. People mm-hmm. are enjoying that show a lot. Um, she's really funny on there. Yeah. Um, Yo, I like I like noticed her like as soon as the group section came on, like because she, she was like yeah. making all these like <laughs> aggressive facial expressions. I was like, okay, yeah, I see you, I it's see you. Face, yeah. <laughs> Did you know? Okay, here's a factoid. I looked up her Wikipedia page because yeah. I just found out she was in Just Jerk, right? And as I was telling Anita before the show, I did oh, not yeah, know yeah. that. Mm. I just knew that um she was like. I knew that she was a famous dancer, and I knew she was a street woman fighter, and I know she did wanna be right. It's the itsy one. But do you know what her first solo work was? As a choreographer, probably something YG, right? Um, Fancy from Twice. Oh my! Wow. Ah, that was her first that. solo choreography work for a K-pop group. Mm. That's kind of crazy. She's isn't been, it? No, she's been okay. There, here's the thing: she's kind of young. 
Oh yeah, she's she's very yeah. young. She's twenty four. Yeah. Fancy was like what, like four years ago at this point. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, she's she was been... she was twenty. Good lord, man. Yeah. She's just amazing. Yeah, like to work on like a main choreo like that, like at the age of twenty, like that's like being like a soft like a senior lead software engineer. For like a major thought startup at the age of oh, you know, yeah, like she's like, I mean? like if, if we think about it, like if we like, I know we're having an E Jung discussion right now, but if you think about her, when she was on Street Street uh Street Girl Fighter, right? Yeah. Um, actually, is, is Street, Street Woman, Woman Fighter? Fighter. Street Woman Fighter. Street Girl yeah. Fighter was the sequel. When she was on Street Woman Fighter, right? Two thousand twenty-one. She's she's one of the she's the captain of her team, and she's twenty-one years old. And there's oh yeah, people yeah. On that show, who are like mid to late thirties, right? It's it's kind of incredible. Um. That being said, Taeyang Shun, it's aight. I, the thing I'm, I'm very kidding. happy is that, <laughs> like, uh, Taeyang has been gone for a long time, right? And mm. then he did Vibe with Jimin, and now he's releasing co- uh, content on the regular. I'm I'm happy that that's happening, right? Like, like that's it. a good thing. Now we're, we need we need some G Dragon stuff, maybe, right? Is that too <laughs> much to ask for, guys? Who knows? I don't know at this point. Give me g- give me an album, please. Not more shoes. I'm not gonna buy your Quindos. Fair. All right, let's move on to the second song. We have Woods with Journey. He's from Yehua, which had four kids win on Boy's Planet. Uh, I don't think that's a spoiler at this point. <laughs> if you don't know, that's, that's on you at this point. Um, His uh, last... Did I write the right songs here? I, I wrote I Hate You. Oh, okay, this is what happened. I accidentally put Feel Like in the Taeyang section. Okay, ah. okay. this makes more sense now. All right. Wake Me Up. Also, Woods. I need to check because I would have missed this all up. All right. Well, his last three songs have w- been uh, okay, Chaser, Kiss of Fire, uh, I Hate You. Uh, There's a song one. called Waiting. There was. Okay. This makes more sense now. I fixed this. All right. This, so, yeah. Someone's already commented on our Discord or on our YouTube. That feel like is the Woods song, not the Taeyang song. I'm I'm sure of it because we we have we have built in auto correction in our in our fandom. But Woods Journey from Yehua, beautiful music video, was oh, it not? So oh my god, interesting. Yeah. I really liked it. I think this video was clearly filmed somewhere in Europe. I my guess is British Isles. Oh, I guess I was thinking like because it's those cliffs, right? The, them cliffs. Is that is that where they filmed the the uh, the third Thor movie? I believe oh, so. Yes. Maybe. Yeah. That, yeah. It, it kind of looked like that. Uh, the Thor th- scene in the beginning, where like, and they rented a sh- like a yeah. chateau, like they always do for these music videos when they go to Europe, right? They rented a chateau. The 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 highlight of Woods' songs, the vocal quality is next level, right? Oh, I love nice. any part where Woods decides to go for a high note, especially in like the middle section when he's walking through the fields and the trees and he sings the high notes. Mm. Really good. Um. How do, y'all, how do y'all feel about Journey? Oh, no. I totally agree with you. Great vocals. I really feel mm-hmm. like he has a pretty, like, like a, like a, he has a pretty high-pitched voice tone, right? And it's right. very, uh, I don't know how to word this. It feels kind of narrow. I'm not saying his range is narrow, but it feels like a narrow voice tone. I don't know how to word it. But it's very, mm-hmm. it's not a very deep voice. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's, oh, he's a really high-pitched voice. Right, right. And I feel, I've always felt like for a male vocalist, there's not many traditional options to do for, you know, for that. But, you know, I really feel like he's going all out in this punk kind of uh, aesthetic. Rockish. Right, yeah. punk rockish uh, aesthetic where he's really able to dig deep and like do all these um, different aesthetics within that kind of larger aesthetic. with his um, And it really fits his voice. It's, mm-hmm. it's just a perfect good match. It's, it's really great. Um and it's not like the song drags on as like a single ballad either, right? It's not like no, no. right. There's definitely high moments, low moments. Um, the gospels at the end, like the gospel choir. Okay, uh, did yeah, it not yeah. sound a little bit like Christian rock at certain points? It does. It does. It does. It sounded, does. God, Kanye on it all of a sudden. Um, I'll, like that is all. I honestly feel like production wise, that's a bit of a cop out because like. Every time a gospel chorus comes on, like I feel a certain emotion, even though I don't go to church and I'm not. In my <laughs> I know exactly religion. what you mean. Right, it adds a bit of grandeur to it. It for does, sure. and like there's like definitely this like emotional like explosion, you know, like, and I feel like that 
you know, again, works really, really well here. Just a really big explosion of emotions and the lyrics really work well too. Like it's mm -hmm. the whole part about um one of the one of the motifs is like there is a small island inside my heart and he's in yeah. And, his original self that he you know put together is like in that little island he needs to journey to find that original mm. self um i don't know the looks are really pretty like it mm -hmm. really feels like it's continue it's it doesn't linger on a certain line or so it it just continues going into going on about this journey why he needs to go on it how he's going on it where it's leading him all of this feels very personal this is like a good example of like a very well-written very grounded, specific set of lyrics that, you know, mm. you really want to look at sometimes. Um, I don't know. I kind of hogged the mic for a bit. How do you feel about this, Anita? I don't know. I definitely agree with everything you guys mentioned. Um, something that I, I mean, maybe it's just, uh, I was kind of hoping that the tempo of the song would stay a little bit more upbeat, but I, I feel like it was more appropriate to come down a little bit because I think, the way that the song was structured was very interesting, where it kind of starts with the guitars, but it almost felt like it was, oh, I thought it was going to be acoustic. And then it kind of keeps going, and then it picks up a little bit more. And that's when I thought, like, oh, maybe this is going to be, like, higher energy. But then when we get to the chorus, it kind of settles back down a little bit when you get the full, like, the full sound of the guitars and the rest of the instrumental. Um I kind of thought it was going to stay upbeat, but I, I understand why I had to come down a little and kind of uh, just like converge with the emotion of the lyrics as well. Um, so that was the only thing for me. But yeah, I feel like the vocals were really, really nice. I, I think the last comeback we covered from him, I had mentioned that his more like rock punk sound. Like a, a mid 2000s. Or no, early 2010s rock song, right? The yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I the last time, yeah, the last one he had, I thought like his vocals really fit that sound and I hope that he would continue with it. And I think he did that with this, maybe a little different interpretation of, of the sound, but it's this still sounds, this, this one sounds like well. the last track on that album with the other Yes, song. yeah, yeah, yeah. But oh, I want to say I made a mistake again. He left Ye while he's in Edom Entertainment. Um... Right, yeah. There you go. Not having a good day in the, this prep for the show, oh, man. Uh, we get there. We'll get there. Uh, we'll get there. We'll get there. Um, no, I like Woods. He he he's doing this rock thing. I think it's working. Um, I I, I mm -hmm. like. Could he? Do we feel like he should continue in this rock path? Do we like that? Yeah. I think it's good. I yeah. think so. Yeah. You know it's what? Very works, unique to him. You know what works so well is yes, it is very unique to him. And another thing is he's like. Not, I don't want to say this, but he's not pulling a Momo land where he's recycling the same tropes over and over and over again. That is true. Uh, that is true. Yeah. It's like it's like he has he created himself a spectrum and he's going through the entire spectrum trying different things. Mm -hmm. And that's that's what you gotta do if you want to create your own color and settle on it and make it unique and just really elaborate on that. And he's really doing that really really well. Um. Yeah. What a lad. Yeah. I, I I think all of the Wood songs are good. Like they're all been pretty mm -hmm. good so far. I think whatever he's got cooking, it's kind of working. I enjoy it. All right, uh, final song, the biggest one of the week. We got La Seraphim, Unforgiven, featuring Nile Rodgers. They are from Source Music under the Hybrid umbrella. Last two songs, Anti Fragile and Fearless. Uh, La Seraphim has surpassed 1.38 million pre-orders of the first full album Unforgiven, their second consecutive million seller album uh, following Anti Fragile. Wow goodness wow 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 okay they had big shoes to fill after anti-fragile right because that true. song was one of the biggest songs of last year um it was so hyped up everyone was really is every everyone's really anticipating this unforgiving track to come out the the pre-release cycle or not even the pre-release cycle the the press and the media that was coming up before the song was pretty incredible right everyone was very hyped mm -hmm. up about this mm -hmm. did they deliver is the big question that I would I would like to ask. Mm. I think they got close, uh -huh. but I think I think a this is just under. like a little under what? anti fragile. A little, a little, little bit. What? A little bit. That's, yeah, I feel like okay, for me. me. Hold on, give me a second. I think for me, <laughs> what what felt a little less novel about this song 
right, is that some of the aspects that I thought really worked and made Anti-Fragile very popular were kind of here as well, but because we already saw it in Anti-Fragile, I didn't feel as surprising or as new to me. Um, one of the things that I would, that that is that kind of like similarity it was like the repetition, like a lot of repetition in, in the verses and in the chorus of a, of a word or parts of a word. And I don't know, I feel like with Anti-Fragile, it kind of worked because it was, it was more contained, I want to say. Whereas in this song, I think it was used more liberally. Um, that was one of the things for me. No, that's a, that's a very good point. I did notice mm. that they kind of flapped on the word Unforgiven. Yeah, I'm a villain. Okay, that part <laughs> was so dope. Like straight up. I like the bat. that. I like that part. That whole. But then intro- we use unforgiven, 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 like three times. <laughs> okay, the whole part of like, Narangzo no magatsu gods and my unforgiven girls, and then boys. Yes, like, that, yeah, yes. That's like, dude, you could say like, you know, my homies or something. You know, what I mean? it didn't have to be like my unforgiven <laughs> people. You know what I mean? Like it's. Oh. It felt yeah. like they were definitely slapping it on a little bit, but. Mm. Other than that, that like bridge section, the I'm forgiven, I'm a villain, that that thing, like the way it works, it works so well. Like the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I I I really want to say this right because back on Fearless, I was like, I don't know who this Kazuo girl is. She sucks at rapping. I can't understand a single (laughs) single word she's saying. You know what I mean? Um, I saw some signs of improvement and anti fragile. Now she comes here. I still don't understand what uh, a lot of what she's saying, but, but, but mm-hmm. a lot of those, like a lot of the pronunciation slurs she's making, mm-hmm. they all feel very intentional. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I thought that. Yes. Like, especially with like that whole like four bar section, the way like they say, I'm a villain, you know, like vil- I'm a villain. I'm not like that. I think that that is like so mm-hmm. like, I don't know. It's just so intentional. It's like so good. You know what I mean? Um, well, there mm-hmm. had to be improvement considering they gave her a lot more lines and screen time this comeback, Yes, right? I she, felt there. it. Yeah. People mm-hmm. said, I, I read a lot that Sakura got a lot less and Kazuha I got a lot more as well. in this song. Mm-hmm. And to be quite frank, I am not complaining about that because I like Sakura, but not for her singing capabilities. I think that's completely <laughs> fair. Yeah. The, way I, the way I look at the song is... Um, Let's put it this way. When you ever uh, watch something or review something or, you know, enjoy a video game or anything like that, when you're playing the game or watching the movie, yeah. mm-hmm. you have like a rating in your head about how this thing is. You're like, man, this is a 10 out of 10, right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. For me with this song, the longer the song went, the lower the score went. And the song is not long. And the song's not long. So Fair. I think after the first um, verses and the first chorus and the first breakdown, I'm like, this is a 10 out of 10 banger, right? Uh-huh. Then when they they add the rap sections, which are fine, but then when they repeat a lot of the elements, which I've heard again, like right. two more times, mm-hmm. I'm like, I, I just feel like the song didn't really go anywhere. I, I understand that as well. I, okay. That's, yeah. my, that's my biggest problem with this song. Personally... Mm-hmm. I think an issue, I think all the issues lie in the chorus, right? It doesn't feel like mm-hmm. it doesn't it, it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere anywhere because the chorus isn't really upbeat or low beat. Like it's just kind of in the right. middle ground. Yeah. Um, the strutting one when they hold hands and walk. Are you talking about that part? That thing, yeah. Love okay. the choreo. Choreo yeah. is nice. The first time I no, saw see. that was amazing. The first time yeah. was amazing. And and the whole part, the whole thing, me and Anita, the, the thing you said about the repetition of the word unforgiven, that's mm-hmm. also the problem with the chorus. So I'm thinking, the track is great. It's just the chorus doesn't slap as hard as it should, <laughs> you know? That's true, yeah. I kind of agree with that. Yeah, it, it, it gets, and I feel like I needed, I needed some kind of change towards the end. I needed something. It ends abruptly, too. I thought it was kind of like... Something. You know what? I'm I'm giving okay. abrupt endings. I've given them mm. complaining about that in K-pop at this point. <laughs> this is an open okay. letter to K-pop. It's, it's, y'all suck for doing that shit. It's stupid. I'm not complaining about it anymore though. It's, it's I'm I am repeating you myself like Unforgiven. You know what I mean? The, the 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 best part about this music video for me were the the Kazaha shots they got on the music video <laughs> were crazy. 
One of them, she rips off a wing. She's becoming the one winning one winning angel like Sephiroth from Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> well, now she shout has out, no wings. Shout out, to, shout out to Kenny Omega. Uh, and then we got um, and then at a certain point they make the wings again out of fabric. That was crazy. Was that yeah, not crazy? That. Yeah, yeah, that was. That nice. was that's like the the lasting shot in my head. I think that one, the one with the fabric wings. That's a crazy shot. Um, they spent a lot of money on this. That drone shot in the beginning was cool too. That was really yeah. cool. When they did yeah. the drone through the, the restaurant. Um, I saw people saying that this song is the equivalent of Itzy's Not Shy for them. Oh. Uh-huh. I like Not Shy. Both Western themed <laughs> songs that are kind of just like loud and in your face is what I've been hearing people saying. Oh. Uh-huh. Not Shy is oh. really good. I like Unforgiven more than Not Shy. Um, I'm the opposite. Oh uh, yeah, what okay, are you gonna do? No, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> no, no. I'm not saying that they're like equal level good songs. I'm just saying the in vibes their, are similar. And their discography. In their discography. Yeah, yeah. In their discography, ah. the the place. Okay, I can see two. that. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. It, yeah, right. I can see that for sure too. The, I guess the difference between that and this is that it's the, it really felt like they solidified a certain color up until that point, and not sure I felt like a bit of a digression. Whereas this one. What. Oh, wait, 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 give me a second. Good lord. <laughs> no, no. Okay, okay. What I'm saying is with the first songs with Itzy, the first three tracks, Tala Dala, Icy, and um, Wanna Be. Wanna Be, Me, Me, Me. That Those three songs, they felt very consistent in terms of attitude and aesthetic and tone, mm-hmm. regardless mm-hmm. of quality. Not sure I dropped, and it felt like it'll try to adventure a little, a little bit. Yeah. Okay, yes, yes. I'm not Thanks, saying it was yeah. bad. Jesus, good lord. <laughs> um, With this track, Regardless of quality, it feels very consistent with the first two. Because to me, it felt it like aesthetic yeah. wise, it felt closer to anti fragile, but music wise, it almost felt a lot closer to fearless, especially with the way the choruses go anywhere, the repetitiveness, the focus on the, mm. the, the, the guitar, the bass loop, you know, stuff like that. It felt mm. like we're leading into the concepting of the conceptual focusing of. Anti fragile and the sounds of fearless. I don't know. That's the way I saw it. But mm. I think that the also the group is just doing a real good of pushing all these kids at the moment. Like Sakura has her show, right? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yunjin, I mean, Yunjin is great. Jen, that's her English name, by the way. There's mm-hmm. a video right now of uh, Yunjin, Sakura, and Unche, and they each have like a kid with them. They have a Japanese kid, an American kid, and a Korean kid. Ah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, they I'm live translate for them. Like that's mm. a video right now. It's very, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty popular video. Wow. And then Unche's interview series is very popular. Um, really, I haven't seen that. She she interviews like other idols, and she's kind of one of those kids in the industry who's kind of friends with everyone. You know, like mm. she has friends all over the place. Um, and a lot of like. A lot of sumbiz like her, and she has all these like chingus like um, Gyujin from Enmix. She's friends with her. She's friends mm-hmm. with Huning Bahia, and she like interviews all these people in in like waiting rooms during music shows. That's she nice. interviews them. Nice. So it's just like a random interview, and they just say random crap, and it's funny, you know. Um, like I saw one where she was interviewing kids from The Boys, and she was and they, for some reason they got onto the topic of like, oh, you have a lot of baby fat on your face, and he's like, yeah, your face it'll get slimmer over time, but right now you're baby fat. Like they're what? just saying this to her, and it's funny. Like, and then um, she, she was like, she's like, do you know who I am? And then they started singing her lines from um, Anti Fragile, the oh. mm. and they do it. It was really funny. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, he's like, yeah, of course we know who you are. Um, so. That's that there, and obviously Kazuo is extremely popular at the moment. And K1 is like an S tier talent, I would say. She's absolutely destroying their concept. Um, yes. So I, I think that Source and Hybe, of course, they know what they're doing. This group is oh yeah, yeah, yeah. massively popular right now. Oh. I would say like in terms of the hype for the Seraphim, they're like number two to probably Nutrients at the moment. Yeah. What I've I've yeah we got okay to never, out mind. Where I fits <laughs> never mind never mind they're in they're, they're up the, there they're up there okay okay yeah. I ain't gonna make a number okay I take that back <laughs> let's not right? take numbers they, they, right? they're, top they're, tier top tier top tier together they're, they're in they're in the yeah they're, okay they're in the modern day S tier girl groups they are yeah I they have to be I would say so yeah for me the modern day trifecta is the Seraphim Ive and New Jeans yes. There you go. No, no and specific we, order. And we but have yeah. to see what the ESPA comeback is going to be. Are they going to reconfirm to us that they're still at the top? 
Oh, we have to see. Well, they, still have Kwang here. They better deliver. You know, they better <laughs> they, deliver. This this Espa deliver. This Espa comeback is like very critical. Is it not? Right. It feels critical. Dude, the company rides on it. The new SM board rides on it. Like, it's just That's a lot true, yeah. on their shoulders right because, now. I'd be concerned. New direction. Because, like, someone like an Itzy, I see people already being like, they, they, they've they already gone, you know? Mm. And I see people, for some reason, like, people just haven't grasped onto Nmix really yet, right? Mm. They're still like, they still have time. But people are just like, I don't know how I feel about Nmix. Okay. Um, Musically... I'm not the biggest fan of Nmix, but I'm really not worried about them because their last track doing pretty well. If you they did noticed. well, they won. Also, yeah. Nmix has like really funny kids in that group. <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, comedy wise, that's tier. <laughs> comedy wise, Nmix is literally S tier. Their their clips are hilarious. Um, I started seeing Bay making like weird ass faces towards the camera. There's, there's this there's this new video I saw today of like they're performing somewhere, and then in between every line, Bay starts screaming out motivational lines to them. <laughs> it's like it's ridiculous what I was watching. Wait, what do you mean know. motivational lines? She's like, she's like, uh, so it's like they do something and she's like, one more time now, like, you know, like she's screaming out things like that. Or like, let's uh, get it, you know, like in the middle of this performance. Uh, I don't know. Nice. Um, um, the Seraphim though, yeah, they're killing it. Uh, I, I, so they have the feature here of Niall Rogers, right? Who's a very famous, um, guitarist slash producer. Yep. Uh, let me. Let me give the man some credit and look up the some of the songs that he worked on just to give people some context. Uh, let's see. I'm names. I'm coming out. Diana, Diana Ross. Ross. Mm -hmm. Does that make any uh, sense to everyone? Yes. Uh, Madonna's yes. like a virgin. You know. Oh my god. He's worked with yeah. people like Mick Jagger, Grace Jones, uh, Christina Aguilera, Lady Gaga, Daft Punk. You know, Big like names. this this guy yeah. won a Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. So <laughs> he's he's a very highly influential guy. Warren said he's not on the song credits. He's a feature. We he, he pretty much just um featured as a little bit of the guitar riff in the in the, in the song, right? I th I think that's what it is. The guitar riff, the the loop, the bong, bong, bong. That thing. I think that's him. And that's yeah. So what... I saw I saw people who know who Niall Rogers is being like, like where 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 was he in this song? You know, that's, uh... that's what I saw some people saying. Um, mm -hmm. You know what they should have done? Like the final, you know, the final scene with the mob and like they're they have like cards and like. He should have you know. been there. He should have been the on the. He should have been on the car playing he the guitar. Been on the car. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He should have. He should have. I love like um. What's what's that one movie? Mad Max. He should have been like strapped up to the car playing the guitar <laughs> or something. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. That would have been really cool. Um, oh man. Um, I'm forgiven though. People are very hype about this. Oh, wait, and they probably should be. Do you guys, do you guys uh, hear the uh, other track that's going viral right now? Which one? They did two B sides, the, uh, right? That I said perform. The the I'm a mess, 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 mess. Uh, oh, that that's song. a really long title. What's it called? Like Psyche? No, Eve, Eve Psyche, Psyche and, and the Blue Beard's wife. Yes. Okay, I saw the title. I didn't listen to the song. Is, is it that, ridiculous? What is it? Jersey? What is it called? That's also Jersey House. Yeah. Jersey House. Yep. That, I heard it. That chorus was like. I'm a mess in this dress, but we're still the best dress. Like, that whole chorus is like, it's like, um, I don't know. That whole bit feels like it captures who the Seraphim is so well. <laughs> like, the repetition, the badassness, yes. you know, like, all of that. No, this song is, is amazing. I, I know, right? Chorus. It ba Okay, I, I understand if, why if it can't they be wanted, the If uh, they wanted inside, to but... do this, this high-level editorial stuff, they should have released this song as the title track. You okay, know, like, no, a lot of the list... That's so risky. the the La Seraphim, like if I think of La Seraphim imagery, I think of like black and white editorial, mm. like in your face, weird shapes, weird cut, like weird yeah, dresses. Yeah. I think that song matches the vibe. The um, it does match the 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 well, it it cuts into music from the uh the runway scene from the teaser for the. Yes. Yeah. yeah so I like that song more. Oh man. Um. Okay. <laughs> it's a clubby. It's a clubby song. It is. I like the clubby mm. song. Um. um <laughs> Okay, other releases this week, uh, Taeyang Seed, which was the A-side. Icon released a B-side called Tantara. The the A, the A track will come out next week, I believe. Um, Zodiac, which is a... They had a debut with Throw a Dice. They didn't write Throw a Die. They wrote Throw a Dice for some reason, which is very All Korean right. grammar right there. Um, <laughs> we had Epics with Shun, Sun Shower. Extenary Heroes with Freaking Bad. Daya Jun had a solo debut, Easy Breezy, featuring So and Gook. That's like a weird feature to get Whoa. on your track. Um, 
One Us released Unforgettable and CMDM. Uh, they had a debut with Already Go oh, Already Go Ready. Okay. Yes, that is the name. Already, Already go, ready. go Ready. Okay. <laughs> it's a little bit confusing. Um. Okay. Vice King. Last week, episode two hundred and thirty-three. Seventeen Super picked up its first crown. I I am got second place, and there was a tie in third place between August D's Hagem and A Pink's D and D. The new candidates this week are Taeyang Shung, Woods Journey, La Seraphim, Unforgiven. Uh, okay, I have I have I am in third place this week. I do. Um, third place. I was, okay. Damn. I've listened to that song enough. At this point. <laughs> so I, like, I listened to it a lot. All right. I'm, I'm done listening to it, guys. I'm done. <laughs> so it's the third. I was debating between Super and Unforgiven for first place. Oh, uh, okay. I'm gonna put 17 in first place, though. I nice. think it's the better song. Okay. Uh, okay. And second place, I'll put La Seraphim's Unforgiven. That is my turn. You are spicy. Okay. Um, I'll start with first place. That was the easiest one to choose this week. Um, also still with 17. Super. <laughs> um, I've seen some of the live performances. Very nice. Really like the choreography. Um, they really pull it off with all the backup dancers too, which I don't know. It's crazy. So it's still number one spot. Second place. I don't think it's a very popular song this week, but I'm putting Taeyang with Shung in second place. Oh my god, oh. Anita! Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh. Honestly, I've listened to this song so much, be- and I've looked at the music video too because I really liked the choreography. I'm a little disappointed that, even though I mean I know it's a B side, but they cut it short for his live performances, so you don't even get like the feature, the Lisa feature, and the dance cut in there in that part. I don't know. I thought it was kind of, kind of missing a bit, but the full song is great. I like I like it. Third place. Ah, it was between two two girl groups. Hmm. But for the sake of one being a couple weeks old, I'm going to go with La Seraphim, Unforgiven, in third. Third? Yes, I... <laughs> The runner-up was A Pink, but it's been it's been a, a couple Pink. weeks now. <laughs> oh my goodness, Anita! I'll let it go. I'll let it go. Oh my god! Oh my goodness. Um, I think there was a really really good moment in Unforgiven, but the repetition I think does take away from the song a little bit. Um, visually though, it was really cool. I liked a lot of their outfits and makeup. As always, they pull off the very chic editorial vibe. Um, a little more out there this time. But it works for them. So, yeah. Third place. Oh, boy. Um, you know, I, I think... Spoiler alert. I think I'm in between you guys a little bit. All right. Yeah. Um, I do have Shu on my chart. It's on third place for me. Um, yes. Lisa's good. rap feature is great. <laughs> Taeyang delivers what he's normally good at. Um, it does feel like does feel a little light you know it feels like uh mm. um i do consider taeyang like one of the top r&b vocalists of the 2000s mm. era period mm-hmm. 2010s era period like he's he's up there like in the post mm-hmm. brown that's eyes that's his thing yeah right in the post brown eyes brown eyes soul era i'm not talking about pop music i'm talking about r&b music he's the fucking top mm. um so i had a very high expectation did it meet that i don't know but at the same time i'm enjoying what i got it's pretty inoffensive um I'm thinking, throwing back to when I had uh, Kanadara on my chart for a while, so. Mm. Shung it is, on third. And I'm like Doug, in that I have Unforgiven and Super on first and second. Um, and I went with Unforgiven on first, and Super on second. Whoa. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, don't get me wrong, I still like Super. That is, that, that yes. whole. That's a really good song. It's a really good wow. song. Yeah. Good lord. Um, but that. Chorus and Unforgiving. Sorry, see, uh, the bridge and Unforgiven. The uh, mm. Unforgiven, I'm a villain, I'm a, that thing. That is so good that it's I'm good. Wo- it's good. 
it's so good that I'm willing to sit through the parts that I don't like just to get to that part. <laughs> That's fair. Oh. That's fair. Yeah. That's fair. Like, the chorus is like, okay, sure, whatever. Skip, hold your hand and skip. I don't really care. Get to the part where you tell me you're a villain. I'm out, you know, like, do that part, you know. Um. So I don't know if it'll be on the chart next week, per se. But for now, I'm here. It's there. It's mm. great. Go for it. The okay. Third thing, slay. Queens. Top tier. Third top place <laughs> from Gochu Gang was Super with 21 points. Ooh, Let's go. Second third, place okay. was I Am with 24. Oh, wow. And then Whoa. first place with 47 was Unforgiven. <gasps> Let's <Okay>. go. <laughs> as, a, as a result, this is crazy. There's a tie for third place. Oh. Heyang Shung yes, and I, go. I Am both have four points. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. And there's a tie for first place. Ah. With 14 <laughs> points, both 17 super, they're going to pick up their second crown, and the Seraphim Unforgiven are going to pick up their first crown. Good. Everybody wins. Let's go. And so, to let you know why that happened, right? War For the Seraphim, Warren and Gochu Gang gave them first place. I gave them second. Anita gave them third. For 17, me and Anita gave them first place. Warren gave them second, and Gochu Gang gave them third. So, it lines up. That's fair. That's crazy. I think that's everybody fair. Everybody wins. Week. Everybody's Everyone happy. wins this week. Yes. By the way, those are the only four songs to get points this week. Everybody wow. wins. Everybody <laughs> wins. So, uh, Except so for Eight Pink, apparently. First place Aww. is 17 Super and La Seraphim Unforgiven. Uh, Super gets second crown. Unforgiven gets their first crown. So Super's up for Hall of Spice next week. And then there was a tie for mm. third with Taeyang Shun and I have I Am. Boom. Let's go. Nice. Let's go. All right. Uh, finally, we're at show winners. Anita, hit us with them. Yes. First off, we have Jisoo with Flower. She won again in show champion in Inkigayo. So she has a total of eight wins with her debut solo track. Then we have Ive with I Am. One on M Countdown. So seven wins for them. And then NCT Do Je Jung with Perfume. They won on Music Bank and Show Music Core. Two total wins so far. Congrats. Yeah. So this chart, it kind of represents that. So... I've, I am, and Kitch are in first and second on iChart. Third place is Flower. Ooh. I am picked up 199 perfect all kills, while Kitch picked up 121. Kind of crazy. Wow. Oh my goodness. And guess what's in third place, guys? Ditto and Hype Boy are tied for fourth. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Stacy is in uh, fifth. It's tied with OMG for fifth place. They see oh. Teddy Bear. People, Korea love Teddy Bear. They love see, that song. See, I'm happy about that, but I didn't love it myself. It's that's all right. So that is what it is. Um. All right. Uh. That ends part one, episode two hundred and thirty-four. We'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. Hello, Soldier Talk Nation. This is Anita here with a quick PSA. If you would like to support Soldier Talk K-pop podcast, please like, subscribe, or follow us on whatever platform you're using. And consider joining our Patreon at patreon.com slash Talk or donating to us at paypal.me slash Talk. On behalf of the crew and myself, thank you. Now back to our regularly scheduled episode. All right, we are back at it with part two of Soji Talk episode 234. We're going to cover some news and events from the past week. We got more Queendom puzzle news, oh, which is boy. pretty exciting. Oh. oh, boy. So Cosmic Girls Uju Sonyo's Yoram is reportedly participating in Queendom puzzle. What? So um, it's going to air this June with Girls' Generation Taeyeon as a host, as we mentioned that last week. If you look at your screen right now, you would think that's Taeyeon, right? From the <laughs> <laughs> Nope, this is Yoram. <laughs> 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 Yo, but just this? That looks like Taeyeon to me. Um, a little bit. So that happened. Next one. It is also shared that Cherry Bullets G1, Chedin, and Bora will also be participating in Queendom Puzzle. It's interesting because G1 and Bora were on um, Produce... Uh, no, Girls, Girls Planet. Planet, right? Yeah. yeah. And then Bora was on the VTuber show as well. So she's doing all, all of the competition shows, apparently. Oh, boy. But that's not a good sign for Cherry Bullet because those are like two of the really no. pivotal members of that group. Um, Multiple members. <laughs> One one thing though is people are not sure if this is like a functioning group by themselves or it's like you do this group on top of your regular group stuff. 
You know what I mean? Like that would be I can ideal. still do Cherry yeah. Bullet, but once in a while we release a song as this group, people mm. think it might be that. I, I wouldn't really That'd say. That'd be great. I wouldn't say ideal though. Like even if you're if if you're doing two, like let's say okay, yeah. for example, G One does both Cherry Bullet and the Puzzle Girls. You know, like let's say mm-hmm. that happens. Puzzle Girl fans are gonna be like, "Yo, G One, like drop that Cherry Bullet crap. Like this is stupid." You know, that, that, they're gonna react. <laughs> I mean, like that's that. what I'm afraid of for this whole show. No, because yeah. this puzzle, puzzle <laughs> group thing. If people get hyped for the show, it's gonna sell really well. You know. Oh, that's the man. thing. We'll have to see how hype Queendom Puzzle actually gets, because like that's true. The last Queendom show, we got hype. Did the no, general public? I didn't. I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, I, we we didn't. Cover I meant that like one. the K-pop yeah. community as a whole. Yeah. Okay. Oh. okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, next one. I think there's one more. Yeah, Purple Kiss Yuki will be appearing on Queendom Puzzle. Oh, okay. So um, she debuted two years ago in Purple Kiss, and she's Japanese, right? But she's appearing on the show now, which is kind of weird. Okay. Oh, this is my least favorite of the announcements because Purple Kiss is pretty active. They do an eye, right? They and with, a- Mama, with, with Mama Moo not really in the picture at the moment, they doesn't RBW need Purple Kiss to be doing their thing? And and look, they're doing pretty well if you ask me. Like, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Cherry Bullet, Cosmic Girls, fine. I understand why. Purple Kiss, you're like you're just a couple of years in at this point. Yeah, and like you're uh, doing a little bit well. Uh, yeah. All right, next piece of news. So IST Entertainment shared that Chorong, Bomi, Namju, and Hayoung will not be renewing their contracts at the end of April. Unji will still be at the company, but A Pink will remain as a group and continue activities. Good. Ooh, okay. Let's go. I got worried for a second. So on top of that, they all signed with. Koi Creative Lab. So Chorong, Bomi, Namju, and Hayoung all signed for the same company. So I don't know mm. if it's going to be at IST where they do A Pink or it's here, but they're still going to remain together, these four at least. Okay. That's an interesting name for a company. Che Creative Lab? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it's a new. I've never heard of that before, this company, but yep, that's where the A Pink girls are. Interesting. Sign. Oh, okay. This is interesting. Choi Lab. Or Choi Creative Lab is led by Che Shin Gyu, uh, and then Kang Jung Won leader who head head director Kang Jung Won, who managed Brown Eyed Girls and Kara at one point. Oh, so it's a okay. new company hmm. that seems to be influenced heavily by DSP Entertainment. So, hmm, okay. You remember when we heard that Brave Girls were kind of ending, right? Yeah. Well, that's a lie. They aren't ending. Oh, so oh, psych. They, they signed an exclusive contract with Warner Music Korea. So it seems Ooh. like it's not over. Yeah, one more happy. run. Anita loves one more run. Anita <laughs> likes Brave Girls. She wants another run. <laughs> Wait, what are so they, they going like, to be called now? You know what? It kind of feels like, right? I'm, I'm not. I'm just going to speculate. This is not true. Okay. Kind of feels like they went to Brave Woman. Like we're kind of done doing Brave Girls. Like can can we get out? Our, can we can we get out of our contracts? And then they're mm-hmm. like, oh, yeah, I'll respect you because you did so well for me. And then and then the next day, once they're all free of the contract, they're like, uh, can we sign with someone else? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's what it oh, seems man. like. Does it not? Right? It Maybe, really felt like it was over because they, they released that one song, which kind of felt like a goodbye song. Right? Yeah. But, yeah. And like, if you if you see the A-Pink pre, pre, uh, press release, they were like, oh, like, this is not the end of A-Pink. We didn't get that for Brave Girls. Brave girls, no. we thought it was over. over yeah. and we we we, le- we learned that one of the girls opened the cafe somewhere. Right. right? We're like, yeah, they're moving on to the, the next phase of their life. But nope. nope. <laughs> Psych. Warner Music Korea. So that's pretty cool. What are you they like going to be called now? Maybe like, I don't know, like Warner Um Brave? Braver. <laughs> Courageous Women. That's the new oh, group. Oh, yes. Courageous, Courageous Women. women. <laughs> <Stupid>. <laughs> no, that's the new group, guy. <laughs> um, next one. Kaeyong revealed that he signed with Interscope Records. So he is going to, um, so he released Shung, which was the international focus track. So I think that was with Interscope Records, more or less, Uh, what they're kind of spinning it as. Okay. Um, But it seems like more of this international focus stuff is on the way. Mm. Mm. Okay. That's pretty cool. I could see Taeyang doing like Coachella next year, right? I could see that. Wow, that'd be something. Right? So this kind of makes sense to me because he, it seems seems like he's fully back and committed to being an artist again. So that's pretty cool. Let's go. Let's go. Mm. Next one. This one seems like, I, why haven't we done this before? So Juhani from Monster X is making his solo debut next month in late May. 
feel like we could have had this many years ago, right? He had his right. uh, Why do I feel like I thought he did? That's what I thought. But he, he had, didn't. No, huh? he did like uh, he wasn't show me the money. He did like solo mixtapes, but like yeah, no, oh yeah, maybe he released like singles, right? Here and there. He, he never did like a full on Juhuang Proper. only mini mm. like mini album music video. That was never a thing. Like it this was is exciting like, though. I yeah. think a lot of people will be mm. interested to see what he does here. I'm same. looking forward sure. to it. Same, same, same. Because when he's in Monster X and he has a limited amount of space to sing his part, it's like aggressive rap. Aggressive, 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 right? Mm. I wonder what he's going to do now that he has the whole like three minutes to do whatever he wants, right? Mm. So it'll be pretty exciting there. Um, Next one. Teen Top. Oh, I heard about this. <laughs> confirmed for the first comeback in four years after Southern yeah. resurgence in popularity. If you didn't know... They were on the Hangout with You on uh, Normio Mohani show with UJ Sok. Oh. So he and UJ Sok and his friends cop um covered one of the Teen Top songs and they did the they rockin'. like yeah. Rockin. No, not Rockin'. That's not was the one they right? did. No, no, no. It was the ooh, ooh, I don't know what oh, song oh, that is. Oh, oh. To you, yeah, to yeah, you, yeah, to yeah. you. To you, to you, yeah. to you. Um so it was a bunch of UJ Sok and his friends, they they covered to you, they even made a music video and all that, right? And Teen Top appeared on the show. People really uh, fell in love again with the Teen Top music. If you remember at one point, they were one of the top boy groups for a couple years. In like 2011, 2012, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So they are now going to have a comeback. Oh my god. That's pretty cool. That's great for them. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I hope they they keep the tone of lyrics they used to have. Oh, dude. Teen Top. (laughs) Yeah, I I really hope it's a throwback song. It'd be awesome. You you, Um, you guys know the song I'm talking about? The Which No one? More Perfume? Yeah, the No More Perfume. <laughs> <laughs> is that yeah. the song where the, it's really like the concept's really sus? Is that the one? With the, it's, it's the cheating it's basically, song, right? Yeah, that's the cheating song. The cheating yeah. song. <laughs> Please don't put on your perfume. My girlfriend will find out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, next one. So this is sad news. So SM shared that Joy will be uh, temporarily suspending her schedules due to health-related reasons. So this is not the first time this has happened, if I if I remember correctly. So... A, l- a little bit concerning. Um, we wish the best for Joy. Please. Yep. Next one. So FNC released a statement regarding the father of Boys Planet trainee Camden, right? Oh so God. Camden made top 18. He was pretty popular on the show. Mm-hmm. The The summary of it is basically during the show, his dad was engaging with Dan Twitter and people on Reddit about all things Camden and he was saying things not only about Camden, though. He was making comments about the other trainees, which were a little controversial, the things he was saying. So um, FNC basically great. came out and said, like, yeah, Camden doesn't agree with what he says. Um, Don't listen to him. Um, And they talk about how his parents are divorced and he's not really on great terms with his dad. So the stuff that his dad's saying, don't take it as if Camden is saying it. So this dropped um, last Monday, right after we recorded the podcast. And then his dad kind of... Got a little unhinged and he went live on Twitter for like three to four hours and kind of ranted about the situation. And he was letting Mm -hmm. random people talk too. It was some mess. Oh, yeah. Like, Uh, yeah. And he was very angry. He was saying Mm -hmm. things about FNC. He was saying FNC is crap. They don't have, they're not nearly as big as Hybe. And we're like, in my head, I was like, no shit. You know, like, (laughs) (laughs) like, why are you comparing them to Hybe? Like, that doesn't make sense. Uh, Um, So, yeah, it was, it was a mess. Yeah, very embarrassing. I would Unfortunate say. for Camden too. Yeah. Um, but unfortunate the for man, everybody involved. Yeah. yeah it was, it was a, he was like letting random stand like people on Twitter talk and ask questions and stuff. It was. The, yeah, I think we were discussing this as well before we started recording. But I think overall the sense is that he's not mentally stable right now. Yeah. So best not to interact. Get him yeah. off the internet. Take away his yeah. phone. Get him off. Stop feeding the troll, please. Yeah. On uh, next one, GI World Tour, right? They're going to be Ooh. making stops in Seoul, Taipei, Bangkok, Hong Kong, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Dallas, New York, Atlanta, and Chicago. Wow. Wow. With and how more. big GI Idol is, I'm wondering to see how big the venue is. You know how, like, that's always a thing here, right? In, uh, in the New York area, right? If you're not too big, you do, like, one of the smaller venues in Brooklyn or, like, Sony Theater, right? If you're not too big. If you're first level big, you probably do like Prudential Center, right? Mm. And if you're bigger than that, you maybe get a date at Madison Square Garden, which is very rare though, because they have high Madison standards. Madison Square Garden, And yeah. if you're the biggest, <laughs> then you do MetLife, which is the football stadium, right? I wonder, I'm going to guess it's about a Prudential level, Prudential Center, the hockey arena level, if I had a guess, which is about like a 15 to 20,000 person concert. 
Okay. Yeah. I would maybe be ten high. to fifteen thousand. I mm-hmm. think like I think they could pull that off. Um, I'm curious to see what menu it is though. Okay. Uh, next one, Weverse Con. If you're interested in the Weverse people, they announced all the people here: Echo, Boy Next Door, B2B, Bumzu, Don, and Hypin from S9, Minhyun, Hyorin, Jeremy Zucker, Ihyun, La Seraphim, Lightsome. That's kind of interesting here. Lightsome. Aren't they in Cube? Moonchild, New Jeans, TXT, Zia. Zico and I don't know some of these to be honest with you, Anti, but it's okay. in person and I believe it's going to be streamed as well. So people are very excited for this. Who's, um, who's Jeremy Zucker? He's one of the people that the that the hype is like collaborating with the Western people. He's one of those. I don't know him too well personally. Interesting. No. Boy next door, I think, is along those lines too. Yes. Mm. So they are going to do the Weavers Con. I think that they're really trying to do like it says here, right? Uh, Cos Cospodome. CSPO Dome yeah. on the lawn field. So it seems like they're really trying to do like an American style festival type, festival type yeah. vibe. Uh, yeah. But it seems like they're going for. P- that, P- Korea's been doing that the last couple of years. Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, I think UMF did their thing here. Uh, uh, yes, they, they do that all the time. Yeah. 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 What's the one where they have water guns? They did that here too. Water Bomb is water the most bomb, famous. Yeah. Water yeah. Bomb. And then they used to... I, I, I think the, the Mud Festival back in the day used to do a little bit of K-pop too. Back in the day. Hmm. Okay, that's Borio, a little different. That's a little different. Borio, Borio Mud Festival used to have K-pop people at it okay, no, back no, in the day. No, okay, that's a completely different thing. Because like all over the country in Korea, there's like these local festivals. Like the Pepper Festival and like the <laughs> the Seaweed Festival. And they uh, would local. invite singers from all yeah. over the country. Well, all I'm saying is before thing. Water Bomb, that was where people went in the summer to that one. It's okay. true. It's true. <laughs> okay. Yes. Back in like 2010, dude. Uh, speaking of we, speaking of like Hybe and Weavers, though, Unbi joining Weavers. Oh, nice. Interesting. Nice. Woolims, Unbi, and then <laughs> lastly, uh, this happened also. AKB48 is joining Weavers, guys. What? Interesting. What? <laughs> it opened already, so you could go join. Yeah. Doshitemo kimi ga. Stop moving. どうしても kimi ga suki da. What is that? The 61st single that is dropping soon apparently. I think it comes in this picture somewhere, right? No, let me go back. Let me go back. Got to be right. Here, right? It's got to be. Okay, okay. Oh, she's right there, right in the front. There's oh. a Tommy, guys. Nice. So you can now follow her on Weavers with her uh, other AKB friends. Um I don't know anyone in AKB anymore. I used to be a decently big AKB fan during like Gen 1 and 2. Like mm-hmm. really back in the day. But I, I, I haven't, hasn't the group fallen off a bit? At least that's my understanding. Yeah, just a little bit. They don't even do the election anymore, right? The Senbatsu thing? Yep. No, they stopped after COVID. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that guess who is center for this track? Toshitemo Skida, Kimi ga Skida. Who, guess who is the center? Hitomi. Oh, Tommy? There we go. Wow. Let's go. Wait, guess who is here from Team A? Yo, uh, Chiba Eddie. Chiba, Chiba Eddie. Eddie's here. Yo, Chiba, Chiba Eddie is like a top fifteen person now in this group. What? Thing. Yeah, dude. Chiba Eddie from Produce Forty Eight. And there's Ooh. shoes to fill because uh, Nano Okada or Okada Nana left. Okada Nana, yeah. Yeah, yeah. She was one of the top dogs. So there is that. Um, oh all right. Next week though, Espa pre-release. Ooh. Bang Young Gook, uh, formerly a BAP back in the day. Y'all remember him? B two B. Triple S plus Crystal Eyes. Have we gotten Crystal Eyes yet? I don't think, right? Let me double check. We had the Acid Angel from Asia thing. Right. Then we had the whole group, or at least some of the kids in the group. Yes. Now we're getting Crystal Eyes. This is technically the debut of Crystal Eyes. Mm -hmm. Cool. Icon, One Us, and then we get the Espa title track. So we're getting both of the Espa tracks. Oh. Mm. That should be exciting there. All right. Um... After the break this week, we're going to be talking about... Okay, so one of our listeners, um, Yi, is uh, going to Korea on a student program. And we're going to... Mm-hmm. He wanted some feedback and advice about how that's going to be. So Anita and I went to the program. Warren lived in Korea. So we're going to give him advice about going to Korea, specifically in the summer. Um, that should yeah. be pretty fun. So join us after the break if you want to see that. All right. Three, two, one. Special shout outs to our Fiesta patrons. Bagel. Based Mina, Brian, Chano, Delmonic, Ellie, Irvtron, Flacco Louie, Genki Boy, Okumama, 
Honey Pools, Jacob, Liam's Games and Toys, Luke Daniels, NJ Park, Tear. Thank you. Special thanks to our Discord server mod, Jacob, K Music Erde, Koala, Max, No Bias Luna, Tuggles, and Wolf297. All right, Warren, what are we doing? All right, we got a question on the Crew Question channel on our Discord. He says, I remember Doug mentioned going on a summer, vac- summer school trip to Korea during college. I got accepted to go to Korea University for the summer school program during June, July this year. Any advice, question mark? I'm going to be a Korea de Seoul campus, which I think is in Anamdong. All right. All right. So that's the question Bro. we got. So... Bro, my, my, my Korean summer thing was super memorable. Oh, was dude. Fun. <laughs> you mentioned it like <laughs> mentioned every two, it, three yeah. episodes. Yeah. <laughs> so, fun. we're going to be talking about a summer college in Korea. So, for full context, if this is the first time you are tuning into our podcast, Doug's Credibilities, he has been in the Sogang Korean Immersion Program in the summer of 2013. Yes. It was yeah. like five weeks back then. Oh, that's short. Mm. Really, really milking those five weeks for two hundred episodes of <laughs> talking about it. That was, <laughs> hey, it's one of the two times I went to Korea, so it was very Fair. memorable. That's Fair. true. Yeah, you got to saw you got to see Gangnam Style before it was big on the music show. Yes, right. That's yes. pretty big. Yeah. I know. Um, Anita's credentials. She went to Seoul National University in the summer of twenty nineteen. I did. Seoul National University. Yeah. Part of Sky. Top Part of Sky. University. Top level university. Top level universities. Hey, yeah. Songong's top 10 too, dude. It's not top there you go. Three, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude, I'm sorry. But uh, Seoul National is just a... Uh, I know. Just, yeah. Sure. It's like, uh, I love University of Michigan. Don't get me wrong. But we're not comparing ourselves <laughs> to Harvard. <laughs> but don't worry too. I also have my credentials. Uh, I went to Sepio Middle School in 2010. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yes, you live there. Yes, <laughs> I also went to. You live there uh, for longer than both of us, so that is yes. true. That is true. I I also went to elementary school. I graduated mm-hmm. Nejong Middle School. Our most favorite, <laughs> uh, famous alumni is uh, Yuina, the actress. If you guys know that is. Oh. Did you know they said your school closed on Wikipedia? <laughs> what Sepio Jokyo? Is it in Bundanggu? Wait, Sepio Middle School closed. That's what it says oh, at the no. top of this Wikipedia, dude. <laughs> what? <laughs> it says uh, it's scheduled to be closed in 2020. <laughs> that's what it says. I don't know. That's what it says. I could be wrong. Look, look, yo, what? <laughs> Hold up. Yo, screw the podcast. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> that's the right one, right? The, the wiki link I sent you, right? Give me the wiki link. It's not there. Because there's like multiple Sepior middle school. <laughs> yeah, no, I was in Hongnamji. I'm up on Okay, no, I think that's fake news, Doug. All right, well, fake news? We'll edit this wiki then, Warren. I think that's it's they- incorrect. <laughs> I think it's incorrect because I am on their website right now and then they have a survey for school violence that is running between 2023, April 10th to May 10th. All right, well, someone lied on the Wikipedia page. You False Wikipedia information page. online. Are sharing fake news? You should double check your news <laughs> before sharing it. Please provide the citations anyways um all right yep. well that is that is who we are that's what we're gonna do um let's i, I, I kind of broke this down into three things um tips for surviving in school tips for doing touristy stuff tips for blending into korean society um mm. i don't know let's, let's start from the top right how how was the uh, educational experience in the obviously he's gonna be doing korea university which is also yeah. goddamn high class university but i'm gonna I'm be honest yeah. i'm gonna okay. be honest here mm-hmm. you need to go into this korean program making a decision on day one am i gonna try to be really educated or not <laughs> Like really? No. Like, am I gonna I be a student? Am I be? Am I gonna be a student, or am I a tourist that's here because I'm a student? You know, ah. right? I think there's a really big distinction. It's, at least in my program, right? You do four hours of classes, 
We did two hours of cultural activity at the at mm-hmm. the end of the day. Cultural activity could be like um, there's like Korean dancing. We oh. learned how to do taekwondo. We learned how Ooh. to cook. We went to a baseball game. We did all these crazy things, right? Oh, same, yeah. Um, but there's a real distinction between the kids. There's kids who are actually so. Our my program was based on learning Korean and Korean culture. Mm-hmm. So is it yep. how much do you actually want to learn Korean Korea Korean when you're here for these five weeks? Do you know what I mean? Mm. Yep. Yeah, that's so true. So there's a lot of kids who want to learn Korean, so they don't party as much. <laughs> they learn Korean. They do this. They do the school thing. You know. And there's other kids who are there to have a good time. I, I tried to do both, which was very difficult at a certain point. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. there was also kids who were like super fluent, but then wanted to test into a lower class. So they didn't have to study much. Mm. That uh... happened too. Because I had like a Korean evaluation. To, I tried really hard. I didn't test very well. <laughs> at the time, my Korean was horrendous. Like I tried. That's but fair. I didn't get placed very high. I think I was in like level two out mm. of five or something. Yeah, I think. Anita, was that was that similar for you? Kind of. Um. So my program was also through my Korean language course. Um. So I was a part of the course for the beginning for my senior year, and then as part of the course, we had that trip at the end of the year. Um. So. Basically, the purpose of our program was to have more practice uh, speaking-wise, mm. speaking the language, um, kind of getting more of a cultural learning experience as well. Like you mentioned, like doing a lot of cultural activities, um, going to local places. It, it was a lot of like field trips for my program. Um, but I definitely agree with the sense of if you're, you, you have to decide how much you're going to like put effort into communicating and like actually practicing. Cause I think it's very easy for a city like Seoul to not practice as much. Cause there's a lot of English everywhere. Um, and I think if for a lot of areas you can get away with just speaking English. Um, but if you really want to like learn and practice, you have to make an effort and try to talk. <laughs> Let's let's put it this way, right? Um, at least my program, I don't think you could fail it, to be honest. Mm. I don't think, like, you could have skipped all the classes. I think you'd get the certificate at the end. Yeah. Um, mm. Like, um, we had quizzes and stuff, but, mm-hmm. like, it wasn't that difficult, to be honest. It was like, um, a, yeah. yeah. For my program, um, it was also pretty r- relaxed as far as, like, the course itself, like, in the classroom. We had like end of the, our program was also like around five weeks, end of the month, like final project that we had to do. And it was purely like speaking based, like it was a video and stuff like that. Um, but it was pretty low key. Okay. It de- I guess it depends on like what the expectations of your program is. Like, are you going to be taking courses within Korea University or so it sounds like- are you there? At yeah. least for the two of you guys, you guys weren't like going to learn or go in Korean or like. No, we were going. I was going to get immersed in Korean. Anita too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Part of our program, though, we had to like shadow courses. So we, oh, I, I had to not. attend like a biology lecture oh my God. for somebody like a, and then another like in common affairs class. It, it was very interesting because the courses were all in Korean. Um, but uh, you could still, like, my level at that time, I could understand bits and pieces and get the general gist of what the course was about. Um, but I wasn't enrolled, like, actually doing coursework for the class. We just had to shadow them. So you just go hang out at lecture while the lecture goes off about biology in Korean? Yeah. Yep. But, <laughs> wouldn't, I'll be honest. I know your Korean is really good. But like not that good. <laughs> a bio lecture in Korean, I wouldn't be able to. That sounds hard for me. I'll be honest. Cause it I was hard. Right, okay. <laughs> good God, I feel like that. But it was interesting. Like, I, I found it interesting. I'm sure it's interesting, but I feel like there's like throwing you into like the you know like the lion pen over there. You know what I mean? Like this is a little yeah. scary. This is, this is what I'll say. If so, this is not to you. This is to anyone listening at home. If you want to go to the chill program. Go to the Wooden Sogang, the Korean language, uh, the <laughs> Korean immersion program. Look it up online. Like, 
let's put it this way. A lot of kids, after the fact I found this out, a lot of kids were going because it's one of the cheapest ways to have like a four to five week vacation in Korea. <laughs> like, I'll put mm. it this way. Not including your airfare, it's like 2,000 USD and you're there for about four to five weeks. Wait. And you're dormed and they feed you two meals a day. So food and hotels covered. Yeah. Yep. And it's like 2,000 bucks for the whole time you're there. That's basically like fire Festival, except they delivered at that point. Like, that's really <laughs> cheap, right? On paper. Let's say you're there. Like, let's say it's only four, four weeks. So let's say it's like 28 days, right? That's like, that's, that's like $70 a day. And they feed you two meals. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds very cheap if you do want to go. <laughs> when to you Korea. factor in the airfare too, right? It's probably double that then. So it's like $150 a day. It's one of the cheapest ways to stay in Korea for a long time. Mm. Um, Anyways, it sounds like you either got to make your decision about whether you want to be educated or uneducated. uneducated. <laughs> Rather, sounds, so sounds like both of you guys are leaning a little more towards the uneducated route over here. Uh, not, not by I was, so. I was. Okay. <laughs> I was. That goes out getting drunk and wasted. I was a little bit. I, I could have, like, let's put it this way. If I had wanted to real struggle, I probably could have been in a little bit of a higher than I was Oh, okay. But you chose not to so that you can go drink Enjoy it, it more. Okay, no, that's Because I had never been to Korea before, right? So mm. I was like, I want to experience everything. So I was clubbing true. in every neighborhood, you know? <laughs> um, I, I will say that, um, sorry, just as an aside, for people who might be going for like actual like, coursework, I know that a lot of the programs that do like f a little bit longer summer exchange... They, a lot of the courses are already in English. Um, since your focus is not necessarily like speaking the language, it's more like getting credit for the courses. Um, I will say also that a lot of these university students are really, really good at English, like very yeah, good, like to fluent. Get into these, to get into these good colleges, they have to have yeah. at least really good uh, ri uh, writing cr English. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yeah. The yeah. speaking might sure. not be good. But functionally speaking, they'll know what you're saying. Uh, even, even oh, I thought days, they were great. Yeah, even these days, yeah. speaking's become really good. Like, I was, mm. back when I was in Korea, I was talking to my nephews who, like, um, they're, they're not college level at all. Like, they're, like, elementary <laughs> and, and below. And they call me Like, <laughs> you know, and, yeah. and, like, the America Azashi to them. And they're like, oh, like, uh, my cousins were like, oh, like, go practice Korean, American English uh, with your uh, cousin over there. <laughs> And then they came up to me. They're like, oh, "Hey, what's up?" And you know what I mean. Like they're, "Hey, what's up?" <laughs> <laughs> they were they were pretty good with their English. I was like very impressed. I'm not yeah. gonna lie. Yeah. So I feel like if definitely try to like connect with people. If, if anything, like just if to, there's like, if there's help, ever like a buddy it. program, you should probably. Mine was it. a buddy program. Yeah, I, I did not really have cool. one. I probably should have though. Yeah. Um. Here's what I'll say, from like a mm. uh, more of a Korean perspective. Mm -hmm. I. Obviously, when I'm in Korea, I'm not really hanging out with the um, exchange students mm. until I go to Hongdae. <laughs> ah. And like, well, okay. I had that kind of experience. Yeah. No, c here's the thing. I don't, maybe it's because I like speak English, but like whenever I see kids that are like very clearly like exchange students, I'll like start like talking to them. <laughs> and like, there's a good variety of kids. Like some of them are like, oh, I saw you last week. Oh, I saw you last yesterday kind of kind of people mm -hmm. some of them are like oh like this is my first time in a club so like oh <laughs> i don't think you have to feel worried about like oh if i you know focus on studying i'm not gonna have time to hit up St. cold and hong day you know what i mean like it's you're no gonna, no because yeah. if, you, if you think about it on my my entire program there there was maybe three quizzes right out of the like 30 something 40 days i was there and it's like i studied for those like the day before you know <laughs> like mm. so the rest of the time <laughs> You're typically free. And Korea has a culture of, like, having fun on weekdays, too. Not like America, where it's, like, Thursday, Friday, Saturday are the fun days. Oh, people go if, drinking after people class. People go drinking every yeah. single day. You could, potentially. So, it's, it's one of those things. Like, for me, we, like, the weird thing was, I was in the immersion program, right? One of the kids in my class was a, a kid named Kevin from the Philippines. But he spoke fluent English, right? So, it was no problem. Mm -hmm. Um... While we were at the dorm on, like, the first week I met him, he was cool. Mm -hmm. And he found out that he knew the RA for our dorm. Like, his, he was, like, a family friend, and he didn't know that he was going to be there. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. wow. So, 
the 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 RA of the dorm basically just like adopted Kevin, me, and this one other kid that I was there <laughs> with, and he took us to everything, more or less. That's oh, nice. Wow. Yeah, ha- yeah, meeting people and like that's a good way to get a, like around. Here's like, the thing: campus, everyone place. typically, unless you're like me, because I went with other another kid from Michigan, right? So, um, if you if you don't go with other people who like you know, everyone wants to make friends there because no one wants yeah. to go and hang out by Be themselves while they're in there. Korea, right? Mm-hmm. So. You're probably going to make friends. The weirdest thing was the, the Korean kids in our dorm during the day would not talk to us. But whenever we saw them at the nightclub, then they'd come talk to us. <laughs> <laughs> it was the most Korean thing ever, dude. Because <laughs> here's the thing. Everybody's kind of introverted. And then yeah. a little bit of alcohol goes in. And then like, okay. all of a sudden, every, it's all of a sudden all of you speak <laughs> Everyone's English, extroverted. You know? Let's go. Everyone speaks English all of a sudden, right? <laughs> yeah, so that was the thing. Yeah. Um, um, all right. Well, that's the school part. I don't know. So I'm assuming you guys were doing a lot of like touristy crap around the city. Yes. So I, the way my program was, we did a cultural activity, quote unquote, every day. So I didn't even have to plan any tourist Same. crap. Mm-hmm. Baseball was like top five. I thought that was so much fun. We did baseball. Baseball. Um. I went to Inkigayo filming on a weekend. We went to Inkigayo, yeah. Um, uh, for us, they took us to a folk village, so like I a traditional, oh, that's fun. A yeah, traditional I know that area. If, you're, if your program has any kind of weekend guided tour one weekend, do that too. Yeah. I went on like a huge weekend tour um, in Gangwondo in the northeast region, and like it was it was fun. Like oh, yeah. we stayed at uh, what's the giant water park in Gang in Gangwondo? We... I think Vivaldi Ocean World. I went there. Wow. Yeah, night. they took us there. We stayed in the hotel. It was a lot of fun. We, um, what did we do? We did like a tour of the palace, um, like close to the Blue House area. And. Oh, it's Bukung, right? Bukung, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. And my program, so the year my program was the first time. The program was existed, right? So I think they went all out. My program had us flown to Jeju Island. Oh my god! Oh, wait, you, guys flew to, you? you guys flew we to Jeju Island? Oh my yeah. god! Oh my <laughs> we god! We stayed there for like a weekend, um, and that was really fun because we got to go diving. Oh my god! Oh my god! Um, That's crazy! We my like program a, did not do that. Yo, I don't even yeah. know how to dive. Yeah, we went diving with the. And yo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the 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 grandma scuba divers is it? Yeah, they were so friendly. <laughs> That's cr- oh, yeah, they really went all out. I programmed it. Yeah, they went that. all out for did, us. Did you have to pay extra for that or no? I had to pay extra. No, for that my was trip. that was in no? the trip. Oh my yeah. god, Anita! But oh, it was god. really fun. We we did that. Um, it's basically we did a lot of eating. It was so much food. Basically, yeah. while you're at your program, if there's any kind of activity to do anything, even if it's not a completely up your boat, just go. Just go. Yes. Say yes to Everything. almost all the opportunities. Okay. Yeah. Um. Can I? Yeah. This is kind. Of... This sucks ass. What? What? I don't get to do any of this fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, it was so much fun, dude. I that's right. That's why I keep talking about it. It was like the most packed five weeks of my life. Dude. I was exhausted every day. Yeah, I was exhausted every but day. But it was though. really okay. eventful. Here's yeah. The thing. Every time I bring like non-Korean friends to Korea, I have to do all of this crap, and it's expensive as hell. Nah, the, the my <laughs> program literally has a schedule. They're like, we're gonna learn Taekwondo on Tuesday, go cooking on yeah. Wednesday, go to a baseball game Thursday, Saturday if you want, you can go to Inkigayo. Like yep, they literally yep, yep. have a calendar. Yep. I, I made yes. my own notion spreadsheets with calendars. It was ass. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like it, it, it like it's it's it, it's crazy the schedule they give you. And you're like, um holy crap. I, I'm sure it'll differ depending on which program you go to and we it don't does, know yeah. what Korea University does in particular about like I'm imagining some of this is gonna be there. I'm imagining some of this is gonna be for whatever program y'all go to. Um, yeah, these are all some fun. Of these like are standards. Yeah. yeah, like here's the thing. Like baseball, for example, baseball. I'm not a huge fan of baseball. I don't even know all the rules. I'll be it's honest. So fun. Yeah, mm-hmm. but like you go for the excitement. You go for pre-gaming, you go for after-gaming, you go to eat chicken and beer while you watch the game and yes. like cheer. <laughs> it's like, all of these are a good vibe. If, even if your program doesn't offer baseball, 100% go. That's one of the most memorable, I think. 
If they have an option between baseball and K League soccer, go to baseball. Baseball and Korea's next yeah. level. Yeah. It's baseball um on a on a league level sport, baseball the most po- baseball is the most popular sport in Korea. Mm. The other thing is if you're in Korea, you probably like like you you're probably going because you like K pop, you should probably try to go to a concert. <laughs> That's oh, yeah. like the, one of the things I would say. And these days, like the websites like Interpark, uh, globalinterpark.com, is pretty easy as a foreigner to get tickets and stuff to concerts mm. as long as they have them available. You know? The, yeah, the thing is like in order to, in order to buy stuff in Korea, a lot of the stuff online that you a lot of the stuff that you can buy online, you need a Korean phone number. So I'll talk about that in a second. But mm-hmm. luckily concert tickets they know who they're dealing with in the demographic. So you can a lot of them nice. you can buy without <laughs> phone numbers. Yeah, typically they'll just say like write your passport number on it and then you show up, you show them in and they're like, Yep, that's you, you mm. know? Like something like that. So that's fine that way um well i mean this sounds pretty straightforward just do what the school told you to do or asked dude, you to like, do there were so many activities it was insane the amount of shit i was there doing. was so much and a lot of it also was led well in for my program it was led by our buddies so like some buddies would like show up and be like hey we're gonna go down to a local like market like does anybody want to come and then people yeah we had like we had like event leaders Mm -hmm. too like they would lead everything they were clearly being paid for the summer to lead stuff and like they were just leaders to everything (laughs) so are they are it was nice i'm assuming they're like like students yep they were university students mine was like students or faculty for the program Uh my yeah the program also had like faculty okay oh yeah yeah faculty also that's pretty cool and they get to practice their ling- English and all that. Okay. Yeah, the, and like and our were faculty, perfect. <laughs> our faculty people were like they were like the young teachers, so they were like late twenties, early thirties. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It, like, if I'm like a like a nineteen year old dude, it might be awkward just getting lunch with a dude in his mid fifties. Just like, you know what I mean. <laughs> so I'm glad they're their peers. Um, mm. Okay. And on, on and at the end of the day, it's like I would say out of all, I, I've been to many places in the world. Korea is one of the most easily accessible for people who don't speak Korean very well. Everything's in English. A lot of signs, subway stations. At, at this point in my life, I've been to a lot of Asian countries. Um, I 100 percent agree with you. Um, I feel like getting around in a Chinese speaking country and a Japanese speaking country. It's a lot more difficult if you actually don't speak the language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's a... An, in Korea itself, they made a new app. The government made it. It's called Seoul Subway. It has a map of all the subway stops, right? Okay. You literally click where you started from or where you're going, and it tells you exactly, like, the path to go in English. Oh. what was what very it? useful. Can you send me a link or a screenshot of the map? Or the app, I guess? Because there's a bunch of apps people use for subways, and they're all, like, decently good. Transport, public transportation also, again, aside, was really easy to use. But I overall, thought it was yeah. really convenient. I this is this generally applies to all the Asian countries, but public transit in Asia, mm. God tier, God tier. I'm sorry, I live in New York. New York transit, it's fine. <laughs> it's Ooh. fine. This one, Warren. This is like from, made by the government. Okay, it's like the official one. So, let's talk, speaking of apps, that's a good pivot. I think um, we live in the twenty. We live in 2023. Can't really get around with a good smartphone in Korea these days. You know what I mean? Um, That's true. I, I went without um, like a plan, service plan. But I didn't have Wi-Fi. <laughs> honestly, it is like yeah. so much easier to do stuff if you have a phone number. It, it's a it little more true. complicated. That is true. Yeah. But because you guys are foreigners, a lot of people who are listening are foreigners. You got, There are ways to sign up as a foreigner. Um, you, yes. Yeah. So you could sign up for a sim and pick it up at the airport these days. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, you could use and and like stuff like delivery apps, for instance, or like putting your name down on a wait list because you want to go to a really good, whatever food place, you know, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Cause they'll like, they'll like message you back on the like cacao talk, but like not on text oh. for some reason, stuff like that. Mm. So what I would do is get a phone number, right? Get a phone number with your name attached to it. Build a Kakao Talk account, even if you already have an account, right? 
and use that to get around places because that will that will save you a lifetime of things. Um, yeah. Another thing, right? This was I was kind of struggling with this a while back because um, in order to figure out where I want to eat, I use mm-hmm. Yelp a lot in in, in America, right? Mm-hmm. Especially here in New York. Um, they don't got Yelp in Korea, so I was out here using this app called Mango Plate. Um, I used I didn't use that app, but there I used something similar to that yeah. when I was there too. Yeah. As far as I understand, to be quite frank, I'm not a pop and Gen Z in Korea anymore. I've been in America for like ten years at this point, um, mm-hmm. so I might be wrong. But as far as I can tell, Mango Plate seems to be like the popular uh, review um, thing in terms of food places. So I checked that. One more app I would probably... This is a more of an obvious one. Um, Google Maps. Kind of ass in Korea. Don't, I, Correct. Correct. Yeah. The Google Maps doesn't work well. Yeah. This sucks ass. Doesn't have a lot of the information. Use Naver Maps. This one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I use that. Way better. Or if you really want, you can use uh, Kakao Maps. But um, Also, these days, you could... Uh, so, this wasn't around like 10 years ago when I went. But, like... the You know the phone... Real time translating with the camera, uh, yeah, that works really well in Korean because like Korean's a pretty simple language for for the, the, the software to do. Yeah, and it'll be a lot better. Google Translate is fine. Use a uh, neighbor Papago. Um, it's built Papago, by oh yeah, <laughs> it's built by a Korean company, so it works a little better. Um, That's the one I use all yeah, the time. Do I use it for Japanese? Like whenever I buy like Japanese food, I don't know how to make it. I'll like scan the back. Mm. <laughs> does that yeah. have the la- the live translation with the camera? It does, yeah. See, dude, that those things. I wish I had that back then, dude. Like, I was a little bit lost at times, but that thing makes it so much easier. You gotta have that. That that will make your life so much easier. Oh and um, these days, even if you're like really confused. Anyone in Korea under 40, if you, like, say basic English words, they'll generally be able to help you in some capacity. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Say. I don't know what um, else is there. Um, here, here's the thing. I keep forgetting this every time I go to Korea, even though I'm Korean. It's like, mm. yes, the concept of a waiter exists. You go to a restaurant. Oh, the button. What? Well, no, the button's don't, a separate Don't thing. tip. <laughs> okay, first of all, don't tip. Because, like, the concept of a waiter exists, but, like, they're like, why... Tip is not a thing. If anyone yeah. ever asks for a tip, you're getting scammed. If a taxi dri- yeah. driver yeah. asks you for a uh, tip, get out of there. Scammer. Um, when you're done with your meal, and you're done with your meal, typically in America, I'm sitting there, and I, I'm like, hey, can I get the check, please? You know, And like they're mm-hmm. like, okay, here's the check. Are you guys done? You guys get a meal. I'm going to get the check. I sign it. They send it back. I get my credit card. I bounce out. That doesn't happen in Korea. Very, most of the times, unless you go to like a high end restaurant, mm-hmm. you go to the front of the store because they'll typically have like a little desk or a little, little, little you know, cash register, right? A little cash mm-hmm. register, and you stand there and they'll see you and they'll be like, Okay, oh, uh, you had this, that, this, that today. Uh, your total is 20 bucks, 30 bucks. Please, uh, how are you? How, how will you be paying today? And you say, Oh, I will pay with uh, Samsung Pay. And then you go, Okay, that's good. Goodbye. Sayonara, you know. Um, that's that 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 works. Speaking for you. of pay apps, right? Samsung Pay, you would recommend? I would recommend if you have Samsung Pay, stick to Samsung Pay. If you are an iPhone user, you're probably Apple. asking, wait, where? What about Apple Pay? Um, Apple Pay is being like literally introduced in Korea, like as we speak to these uh. days. Um, so you would say Samsung Pay or cash, right? Samsung Pay, cash, credit card, yeah, or yep. Credit card. Yeah, get get like um get get one of those like T money cards. That's also a thing, right? T-money? Oh yes, yeah. T money. I don't know how Anita. How did you approach that when you were in Korea? Did you like buy um, a card or like did the school give you one? The school gave us one, uh, um, and it was pre loaded with the, an exact amount, um, so it was really like easy for us. But we used that for Something. transit mm, fees yep. and all that. They honestly like every convenience store has them. It's like yeah, chilling. yeah, yeah. Yeah, just like if you can't find it, just go up to a cash register and be like, "Hi, I need a T money card." And like even if the just cash, go, hi, pre- I American T money card. <laughs> Where they'll know exactly what you mean, dude. They hear the word T money and they're like, "Oh, T money, T money, yeah, T money card." Uh, T money card. What else do Um, if you're lucky, you'll get like one of those like, cute cards with like. Kakao talk here. Or, or you could do I the cool one. thing. Buy, buy one on eBay of your favorite idol before you go. <laughs> it's a little too much. 
You can do it though. You can do it. You can do it. I think yeah. I think uh, Seventeen and BTS have like custom T money cards. Wow. Like Blackpink does now too. Oh, do they? Okay. Oh yeah, I found the one for BTS and Seventeen. Yeah, get these. Yeah, You're not gonna know you're a Korean K-pop fan unless you got the uh, <laughs> RMT money card. With the you. RMT money card. Yo. that's Yay. a flex. Yeah, all the other kids in your program will be like, oh, like they'll be jealous dude, if you put <laughs> one of those out. Um, well, something I wanted to mention. Um, kind of just like not necessarily like a cultural difference, but something I noticed. Uh-huh. But. Um, as far as, like, there's a, a certain type of, like, manners for, like, transit as well. So, for ah. something that happened in my, when I was in the program, um, we'd always traveled in groups, right? Oh, and you guys are loud. Yes. <laughs> so, one of, some people in our group were very, very loud. Um, and it was, like, there was a lot of people, and it was at the time where um, people were switching lines, so... It was like some some noise, but it was obvious that some people from our group were a little too loud. Um, we had like an older man, like the older y'all. He he was said it in Korean, but it was very obvious that it was intended at us. Um, and it was like it went silent afterwards. But like just just <laughs> FYI, like you're not supposed to basically on be loud in most of Asia. Just yeah. shut your goddamn mouth. On the, yep. On the Don't speak transport. on the phone. Like. Like don't having don't be having like really loud think. conversations. These Korean across people are working sixty cars. hour weeks. They don't want to hear loud foreigners on the public transportation. So just yeah. shut your mouth. <laughs> Here's the thing. Um, kind of on that note, it's not something I'm like very particularly fond of in terms of Korean people. Um, we're very we we care a lot. You care a lot about you. <laughs> we care uh-huh. a lot about the people on the streets. We care a lot about the people we pass on the streets. We care a lot about the people you meet on the car, some of them will very actively try to talk to you. Oh, not, I hated this, dude. As not, an introvert, I died every time. Dude, and it's not because they're like hyper extroverted. It's just like some of them will be like, oh, you're clearly oh not from God. Korea. Where are you from? Oh, how are you like <laughs> I Korea? wanted to. I wanted to look at a hat store and the mm. lady talked to me for like 20 minutes. She was trying was like to a, sell. <laughs> no, it was like a, it was like a, like a college age girl. And like, oh. I, was just, I was just like, Bro. I just want to leave. I don't want your stupid ads. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's not like she was trying to riz me or anything. I just wanted it. She just wanted to like, she just, she saw that I was wearing a Michigan hat and she's like, Michigan, are you from Michigan? <laughs> and, then, and then, oh my God, she just wouldn't shut up. And I was like, uh, right, please kill me. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to go home. There are, sometimes like if you go to a clothing store, like a, if you want to go shop shopping, like, this will mm-hmm. this will not happen in bigger stores like Uniqlo or like you know mm-hmm. Spao or like Giordano or stuff like that. But if you go to like a small store and you're like one of the few people shopping, the people who work there will like follow you around. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll follow you around and be like, "Hey, do you need anything? Do you want another uh-huh. friend size?" So, and if you try anything on, they say, "Oh, it looks so nice on you." <laughs> and, and even even though you're like. Even though you're like younger than them, they go, "Oh, Ani!" Right? And they're like, "Oh my <laughs> god!" They just say these ridiculous things to you. Um, and what I would do in that situation is say, "Oh, uh, let me go look at other stuff too." It's very okay to say, "I'm gonna go look at a different store." Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. mostly because oh. they won't beat you up in Korea. Here's here's some things that are weird. That I thought okay. until I understood why. Okay. Um, bathrooms in Korea, right? Bathrooms in Korea. This, mm-hmm. There's a couple weird oddities about that. Really? Number one, well, number one in Korea in general, there's not a lot of places to throw out your trash. Number one. Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. Number two, you should carry around like a tissue pack that you might yes. have to use as, yeah. as toilet paper at Sometimes all times. There's no you tissue. have to have you have to have some kind of toilet okay. potential toilet paper no, no, no. on you. Can, can comment on that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Typically, if the tissue is not in the toilet booth, they will tell you up front because they'll be like, oh, please take tissue with you and they'll give you a roll well, with you. I've seen it in like bigger bathrooms. So like, Also, there are some places that don't want you to to- uh, flush the toilet paper. Yep, right? that's yep. true. Yeah. That's the biggest, that's the weirdest thing that I didn't understand. Okay, basically, more common, yeah. Korea has crappy plumbing infrastructure in many places. So if you're in the bathroom... And there might be some kind of sign, 
like it's a sign that'll probably still be in Korean that says like it'll be like a no toilet paper down the drain sign, right? <laughs> oh, Essentially. Oh. You'll be able to tell just by looking at it. You're supposed to then wipe your bum and put the toilet paper in the trash can that's next to the toilet. Mm -hmm. That's like weird, but it's a thing. Like you have to. I feel I feel like this is kinda common in America too nowadays. In some oh, places, yeah. What? Where? Yeah. It's not as common Where? in some areas. In K Town. But I have seen it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay. No, no. Yeah, I'm, but like, I'm yeah. joking, but like, I feel like it's like I'm seeing it here and there. Like, mm. I'm noticing it every time I see but it. But just notice, but just like be aware that FYI. this is probably going to happen. You yeah. know? Yeah. You, you should always be, when you're traveling anywhere in, in the world, you should be carrying like a tissue pack anyway. What if just you get a case. bloody nose in the middle of nowhere, you know? Yeah. Mm. Or like, you might need like what if what if, what if you get something on your hand? You have to wipe it. Speaking of, capacity. I know a lot of you guys are gonna be tempted to walk around with backpacks, and that's totally fine if you want to. But if you want to just fit in with the crowd, get a get a tote bag or like a messenger bag. Oh you know yep, I mean? tote yeah. bags. A lot of big. I don't know how, but a lot of kids will just go to lecture in their like tiny little pouches sometimes, and I'm like, I don't know how y'all do it, like. Y'all clearly not coming to college to study, but like. <laughs> yeah. Also, another thing that I kind of noticed, or maybe just it depends on the type of campus that you go to in the U.S. or wherever you're coming from to Korea. But I kind of thought that some of the like the fashion of like college or university students over there was a little more like. <laughs> high end. like it was like Bro, they dressed Adina, up a Adina, little Adina, way more. Adina, it was okay. I was I went to Korea thinking, oh yeah, I saw that these Korean college kids dress better than I probably mm. would in America. I should probably wear like nice, decently nice clothes. Oh yeah, today. I felt myself like, oh, I need to dress up a little nicer. But that all went out of the window when I realized how hot and humid it was in Korea. Oh, I still tried. <laughs> I I tried for like the first couple of days, and I was like, f this. Okay, shorts, <laughs> flip flops, and t-shirts. It is. The, the thing is, because they're used to that kind of weather. In, they're like, fine. They're, they'll walk around in 90 degree weather and like full ass jeans and a cardigan. And I'm like, well, I don't know what y'all do. Or, or you see like the, the, the girl from the dorm who just woke up and is walking to the convenience store even though it's 100 degrees out and she's in like sweatpants and a hoodie. And like a black and, hat and a black mask. Yeah, and she's still walking. <laughs> it's 100 degrees out because she just woke up and doesn't want anyone to see her face. And I'm like, how are you not dead? You know, <laughs> that's a thing. It's going to be hot and humid for sure. Probably going to be monsoon season too. Yeah, I mean, yeah, weather, weather was like try to look up what the current temperature is like because it might differ from where you're from. But hot as balls every day. <laughs> but as far as like fashion sense and like fitting in, I feel I definitely felt like uh, at least the people in my program, we all try to dress a little bit nicer. Yes. When what, what, I, what I'll say is Koreans are very much aware that like outside Korea, like. The fashion styles and senses are very different. Mm. Um, some of the people... Remember how I said we care a lot? Mm -hmm. Some people who care a lot are going to be like, hmm, you guys dressed up differently. You know, they'll... <laughs> <laughs> um, what I'll say is you'll quickly pick up on like what's popular and what's not popular because at the end mm. of the day, everyone kind of dresses in a similar fashion. If you want to yeah. fit in, go for it. If you don't want to, I you can... Do the dug route and That's go for true. that. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know, I was the uh, I was an American. <laughs> I mean, you, you you are at the end of the day. So like, dude, dude it was just so hot yeah. that I couldn't be bothered to. Yeah. Dude, I was just trying not to like die. Like, I wore a dress shirt like on the second day, and I was like, I'm gonna sweat through this dress shirt. Like, the possibility, you mm. know. Mm. Even though I'm wearing a white t-shirt under this dress shirt, there's a possibility I'm gonna sweat through it. You know, it's so hot. Mm. What I will say though, like I've noticed. That Korean fashion, the trending Korean fashion these days and like trendy American fashion these days. Maybe it's because of TikTok or like the internet. I don't know. It's kind of blended, right? It's definitely blended. Like, mm -hmm. like if I'm thinking about like what's popular in America right now, like crop tops, uh, wide cargo, partial pants, um, mm -hmm. gore core shoes, all of that. Like windbreakers, all of that. Really big in both in um, like every time I go to Bleaker, I see it a lot. Every time I go to Korea, I see it a lot. Um, like... Like uh, what are what are, uh, like Solomon shoes? Like, do you guys know what those are? They're mm -hmm. they're hiking oh. shoes, um, that have been like really been popular in fashion the last like two three years, all mm -hmm. over Korea, all over New York. Um, 
like Adidas, Adidas gazelles, you know? Samba. Oh, I've seen those. Okay, I've seen okay. those, yeah. yeah. Those sambas and gazelles. If you have yeah. one, take one. It's going to be really comfortable, yep. too. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, you also wear very comfortable shoes because you're, you're going to walk, walk a, lot. a shit ton compared to America. Yeah, yes. you're probably going to get like, I don't know, like 15, 20,000 every day. Bro, I, I ate like a pig over there and I lost weight. Oh. <laughs> we walk so much. Because we walk, everyone oh. in my program lost weight because we walk so much, regardless of how much food and alcohol we were consuming. Look at you. Everyone. Everyone did, dude. We, uh, we walked like 10 mm. miles a day. Um, okay, anything before we want to wrap up this portion of the show? Um, oh, uh, I, I had one thing, actually. Oh. I haven't been to this neighborhood a lot, right? Mm -hmm. But I've been there once because I had a friend who went to Korea University. And he took me to this tteokbokki place. And apparently it's their like, most famous like, oh uh, my God, food place. Oh my god, so good. There's this place called Yuzayu. Um, that does kimchi tteokbokki really well. And they're known for Whoa. pizza, kimchi tteokbokki. Where they put pizza cheese, like mozzarella cheese, all over kimchi-based tteokbokki. And in this picture here, you have literal Korean fried chicken acting as a crust of sorts. Um, That's amazing. That looks so good. You can Google Yujayu Kimchi Tteokbokki on Google and it does come up. It yeah, it's it's really good. I'm not gonna lie. It is it is really good. Like Yeah. It it, it goes really good with the soju there. Like it's it's you have no idea. Um which go which kinda goes back to what Anita mentioned earlier. Like peop there's a concept called panju in Korean, which means like you're using soju to eat. It's like water. Mm. Yeah. So like it's a very oh, casual thing. The other thing, I don't know how familiar people are. It's a lot of family style food. You're going to be eating from the same plate as the people you're with. Yep, typically. Yep. You just got to get used to it. Like, if it creeps you out, like, too bad. Like, everything is typically served family style most of the time. Yeah. Like, if I. You just got to get used to it. Like, you, you, if you get, like, pudetsuge or stuff like that, like, you will get a big pot, pot of it. Mm -hmm. And everyone's just going to scoop from the same pot. Yeah, dude, you gotta yeah. get used to that. Like, if you buy a cake, you're just eating it with forks and chopsticks, like, from the cake. Like, Koreans don't, like, slice the cake. They just eat it, typically, you know? That's what it is. We will if we're feeling fancy, you know? But typically, no. <laughs> at a, at a wedding seen. or, like, a... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. That being said, the main thing I would say is just, like, try to do as many of the activities if they're yeah. presented to you. It's worth not sleeping to have more activities, in my opinion, when you're on this kind of trip. <laughs> don't sleep. You don't need sleep. I would say my... That's why, that's why they sell Red Bull at the convenience store. Ooh. Uh, not the best advice, but I would say also, um, yeah, just definitely try to do as many things as you can. Like if they offer like tours or um, like going like in groups to places, definitely do it. All, uh, I feel like now with the... The recommendation that Warren gave, please like do yourself a favor and like try as many foods as you can. Cause oh my god, the food in Korea is what I miss the most. Honestly, it was so good. Every day I ate something super delicious. So definitely try things out. Man, I still have like dreams of the tonkatsu I had. Oh man, like <laughs> dreams, dude, dude. I kid you not. Like it was literally <laughs> in my dream the other night. Like let me try to pull up a photo real quick. And this is why you need a phone. So you can put your name down on the wait list so you can get in. Okay, mm. I'm logged out of my Apple for some reason. But one, like, one so like streak of videos you could probably watch to get some kind of idea is Korea, uh, Korean Englishman. He took a bunch of like high schoolers to Korea um, like five months ago. Oh, yeah. yeah and yeah, they yeah, tried like it. everything. Mm. So that could give you a good idea of the type of stuff you could try. Look at that. Yeah, quality, great food. <laughs> See, try it out. One of my friends who went with me, they were like, oh, like pork. How good can pork be? He was he was a changed <laughs> man at the end of the experience. He was like, oh, he's <laughs> good food. All right. I think we're good, right? If anyone has any more, if anyone has any more questions regarding potentially going to Korea, or if they have any more questions that they just want to ask us in general, Specific like this, that they want us to yeah. cover, we mm. we would love for you to give us ideas so Warren doesn't have to make them himself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> we, um, we, we do have a couple ideas for the next couple of weeks, but if we get good questions, I will skip all of them so that we can cover your questions like this. So, yes. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Uh, this has been Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop, episode 234. Uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.